Welcome back to another Pico Gym Workout Challenge Write-Up video. In this video, we'll be walking through the Cryptography Challenge new Caesar. Let's get into it. We found a brand new type of encryption. Can you break the secret code? Wrap with Pico CTF. So the flag is not going to be in the standard flag formats. It'll just be plain text. And then here's the encrypted string, I'm guessing, and new Caesar.py. So obviously this encryption is going to have something to do with the Caesar cipher. And you'll see a DEC.py over here on the right and the new Caesar.py script on the left. Don't worry about the DEC.py script yet. That's what I wrote to solve this, but we're not ready for that yet. I want to walk through new Caesar.py first so that we understand what's going on with my DEC.py. So things to note right off the bat here, alphabet string dot ASCII underscore lowercase. So that's going to be the first 16 characters of the lowercase alphabet. So that would be A through P. And then coming down to the main execution, we have flag, which is redacted and key, which is redacted. And then we have two assertions. The key is located within the alphabet. So key is going to be somewhere in the range of A through P. And then key length is one, of course, because it's a Caesar cipher. And then we have B16 underscore encode flag. And then we have it enumerating through the result of this B16 from this function. And it's performing a shift using the key. So this function is essentially doing our Caesar shift. We know that the key is somewhere in the range of A to P, so we can easily brute force that. That's not an issue. The extra step comes in with the B16 underscore encode function. And we probably need to reverse engineer this while we're brute forcing the shift in order to fully decode the flag. Because this is why it's a new Caesar encryption, because it's altering the encryption mechanism for the plain text. But it's still same old Caesar at the end of the day, just with like a little extra step. So let's kind of walk through the encode function really quick, since we have to reverse it. And we are looping through the plain text. So let's go ahead and just set a dummy flag to A and let's set our key to A just for testing purposes. And we're gonna print binary out. And then we're going to print the E and C out just to see what they look like. All right, you'll see there's an extra print out here and that's because of this bottom one down here. So, if we come back up, our binary is going to be 0110001, okay? And we're getting two characters out of it because it's splitting up our binary into pieces of four. So this is 0110, and this is going to be 0001. Now, this in decimal is equal to 97 because that's the ordinate of A. And this is going to be equal to six, and this is going to be equal to one. So if we look here, it's adding the value at the index of the two halves of the original binary number. What that means is we need to actually find what the index of each of these is, right? So, if we're going from A to P, the index at six is going to be the seventh character of the string, and that's G. And then one, of course, will be the second character of the string, which is B. So that's how it's getting GB, okay? Now, if we come back down here, I believe I already said that we can just brute force this shifting mechanism. So all this shift is doing is literally doing like some variation of like a Caesar shift. So we won't worry too much about that. The key thing to understand here is what this B16 encode function is doing. So I think now we're ready for DEC.py. And you'll notice right off the bat here, I inputted the encryption string from the challenge. And then what I'm doing is looping through all possible keys in the alphabet, right? So A through P. Then I'm setting an empty flag, okay? And then remember we're reversing this, so we're going to start with the shift and then we're gonna do the B16 decode. Now you'll notice it's not encode and that's because I successfully reverse engineered it so that it would revert back to its original plain text character, depending on whatever the shift gives us, right? Because we don't know what the actual key is, so we're brute forcing it. 
but it doesn't matter because there's only going to be 16 possible combinations it could be. So we could just print out every single combination after running them through the B16 underscore decode function that I wrote. So we're just looping through each character in the encryption and we're shifting it accordingly, okay? And then right here, I'm printing out the dummy flags or the flag potentially using my B16 decode function. So let's look at my B16 decode function and compare it to the encode function. I create a DEC variable just to match the ENC variable, it stands for decrypt. And then I'm looping and skipping every two, right? The reason we're skipping every two is remember each pair of characters in the encrypted or the ciphertext represents one character realistically if we were to reverse it. Because remember when we encoded it, every character came out to be two characters because it was a split. Then this is where we recompose the original binary number. Okay, what this is doing is we're converting well, I'll just say this. How do we go about getting back the half binary so that we can concatenate them together to make the full binary again? Well, it's very simple. Remember, each of these pairs of letters, or should I say each single letter, represents an index in the alphabet. So if we just get the index of that character in the encrypted text, then that is going to be what we need to convert back to the four bit binary. Because remember, all this calculation does is create an index. So we can basically say, oh, well, the alphabet at whatever the character of E and C is will be what we need to convert back to binary, if that makes sense. So I just do it with E and C of I, and then I do it with E and C of I plus one, right? Because that's the next character over. And then I add them together, well, concatenate them together to form the original binary. And then it's just a matter of simply converting that binary back to an ASCII character, which is what this does. Okay, we just do an integer conversion to convert it from binary to decimal, and then we just do a CHR on that decimal value. Then we return it, and then we print flag with b16 underscore decode flag, right? Because the decode function will loop through all the characters and compose the DEC string all at once and return it. I know that was a mouthful, but let's see this sucker in action. So this will probably make sense to you after we run it officially. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that. And as you can see, I have the key printed out here because that's according to here. I want to know which key actually worked for it. Just, it looks nice. And the only thing that you see scrolling up, it is kind of hard to make out at first because it's really confusing looking. But at key G, there's only one real string that looks like it's kind of readable and doesn't have weird characters in it. And that's this one, et two. So let's grab that. And let's submit it to the flag format. Well, flag submission and put it in the flag format. And that was a doozy, but we got it. All right, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. Turn on post notifications to get regular injections of cyber content directly into your feed. Check out our Patreon, join our Discord, and follow us on Twitter. Links in the description box down below. And leave any feedback or questions in the comment section down below. This is Almond Milk. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.